All right, Vince. Well, with that, we've got more questions. We'll see who's got the answers. Are you ready to wrap the fire? Bam! Let's go, baby. Got some All good right. ones today. All right. We're going to lead it off with an OC question. Fill in the blank. Of course. Kansas State University offensive coordinator Colin Klein is one of the latest names to pop up in Notre Dame's search to replace Tommy Reese, and that's blank. It's interesting. It's not a name that I had on my list. I saw that uh, Brian had that on the the uh, uh, the Champions Lounge uh, earlier. Was that it was last night? I think is when he actually posted that. And I think you're it right. was one. It was one that I was not anticipating. I don't know a whole lot about uh, Kansas State and what they've been doing. I know you have a, a lot closer of a uh you know a thought process on those guys but can take because it's kansas state you're right. yeah right <laughs> and you know reading what brian had to say about him i mean i'm not going to pretend like these are my own thoughts but you know based on when he was oc and and how the offense improved there's a 40 plus yard jump in rushing 50 plus yard uh jump in passing per game you know or yards per game excuse me he's he's coordinated an offense for a mobile quarterback a less than mobile court. Like there's a lot of good things there for sure. Yeah. I don't know that he jumps to the top of my list, but he's a guy that's intriguing for sure. It's, it's interesting. Um, you know, he's only been offensive coordinator for one year, this past year yeah. at Kansas state. And of course he played quarterback at Kansas state. He's only 33. So he's a little bit young or uh, he's a little bit older than Tommy Reese, just a little bit younger than Marcus Freeman. He's kind of right in between them there, but he's coached quarterback since 2016. And again, he played quarterback in college as well. Now, full disclosure, I went to the University of Kansas in Lawrence. He is, you know, a Kansas State guy where my sister played basketball. So, you know, like they 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 are the rival. But when I look at like some of the things they did, 32 points a game this year, 208 rushing yards per game they had this year 5.1 for attempt as a team they still threw for 210 and then you know like you said like they had deuce vaughn which you know like really good you know like at notre dame you're gonna have like four deuce vaughn's yeah. basically now not uh, not identical skill set i'm just saying you're gonna have four really good backs of it deuce vaughn had something like 1500 yards and they had adrian martinez mobile quarterback and you're gonna right. have you know it's like look at what's coming up you know mobile quarterbacks at Notre Dame and he was a mobile quarterback but then like you said he's shown that probably unlike Tommy Reese like he can actually call a game and set up a game plan for a quarterback that wasn't just like he was in right. college you know like they they had the the less mobile guy beyond Adrian Martinez and Martinez by the way ran for 600 yards <laughs> and he didn't even play a full season you know yeah. so um Here's one thing that stood out again to me, like looking at them statistically, they had four receivers with at least 42 catches and five with at least 375 yards this season. Guess who the only guy on Notre Dame's roster who could claim both stats was Michael Mayer. Yeah. So it's like they used the whole field. You know, it was a much more, not only did they run the ball really well, they passed the ball well. And I'll say this, like you can say, oh, Kansas State, you know, all that different kind of, well, Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas, where I lived for five years when I was young, is not quite right in the middle of the state, but it's getting out there. And you're not close to anything in Manhattan, Kansas. You're two hours from Kansas City, you know, to, to the east. You're two hours from Wichita, which is to the south. And there is not a lot around Manhattan, Kansas. And, you know, that's part of why they've used so many JUCO guys over the years, because you can lure those guys out there with the opportunity, you know, to move to power five division one football. So like from a recruiting aspect, I can guarantee you it's going to be, it would be a heck of a lot easier for a guy like Colin Klein to recruit at Notre Dame. And especially again, like he fits the profile of the 99% sure. of the rest of the coaching staff, young guy, you know, up and coming success and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm really intrigued by him. I, I really like it, especially because again, I think, I think recruiting is going to be a heck of a lot easier for him. So I'm not worried about that. Like based on recruiting Notre Dame versus Kansas state, 
night and day different. It's going to be so much, it would be so much easier for him. And then his track record with the quarterback, I think that that is, you know, that's pretty high on my list of criteria, having that, having that ability to work with the young quarterback. So he's, he's one who really intrigues me quite a bit, actually. Oh, look, at I knew you'd have a lot to say about a Kansas State guy. I wasn't sure if it was going to be good or if it was going to be bad, but I knew you'd have a lot to say. I'm, I'm, especially when you sit back and look at what he did with that off. Now, again, it's like, you know, you can, you can criticize, you know, oh, he's from Kansas State or, you know, like, you know, the, you know, the big 12 or, you know, the lack of experience and all that kind of stuff. But as you always say that Brian says, if you got the chops, you got the chops. I always preface it. And with he that. seems like a guy who's got the chops to me. Yeah, no, I always preface it with that. I, I would say everything you said is is 100% valid, right? And it's 100% intriguing. If if you put a gun to my head, I want somebody with a little bit more experience as opposed to just one year. But I could get on board based on everything that you just told me, right? I would want to dive in a little bit more, learn a little bit more right. about him. And I'm sure that that's what Marcus Freeman is doing right now. They're in the vetting process, right? But I would be, I am intrigued by it based on everything that you said. I just, okay. I, I feel like this one needs to be more a guy with more experience, but it doesn't have to be that way. That doesn't mean you can't have success being a younger guy. It doesn't mean that right. at all. It's just, right. I want, I want more security. I, I want, <laughs> I want the higher floor. See, you here's, know what I mean, here's what I worry about with the more experience, like especially based on guys who are on this list right now, when you look at their track records and where they are in life and where they've been in their career, like if I look at a guy like Colin Klein, who's 33 and up and coming versus these other guys, I just feel like, you know, they're, they're probably going to bounce after a couple of years. Sure. Whereas the point, Whereas Klein, you know, and, and I realize some people that might not be as important because you go, well, if you get promoted, then that just means you've got a good program and you go find the next guy. But, you know, like, who's the only team to beat TCU this year? Kansas, well, be before the national championship game, Kansas State, right? And they almost beat them the first time as well. So. I would I would say the accurate. At, you know, hundred percent accurate with that. I, you know, I don't. <sighs> There's so many names that have been floating around, and it would be a smoother, it would be a smooth transition based on what he likes to do to what the personnel that Notre Dame has. So I, you know, I'm on board right. with that part. You know, and he does I some think, RPO stuff as well. Which sure. I like. I whoever that, whoever yes. comes in, if you're successful as the offensive coordinator, let's say two years, three years, you're probably going to leave. So. Whoever they bring in, if they're successful, I don't think they're going to stick around regardless of how old they are. So I, I can't look at this from a long-term situation. I want instant success, and instant success equals probably not going to be here long, if that makes sense. No, I can see that. And, I, you know, I guess you could – but, you know, again, like look at the look at the track record that Notre Dame has had in terms of, you know <laughs> – cranking guys out and sending them someplace else it's yeah it's a pretty short list right you know so now it's that that doesn't mean guys haven't gone other places but they haven't had a lot of success you know most of you know like you've had guys go to the mac and stuff like you know and they just you know still working but it's not like they've been ultra successful once they've got there so right. i mean i can see your point though like how important is that that maybe you feel yeah you know, like you're gonna have somebody you know who's gonna stick around long Fill in the blank. It's blank that former Notre Dame safety Brandon Joseph is not ranked among draft analyst Dane Brugler's top 15 draftable safeties. Appropriate. I I don't think, I you know, he had his best year in 2020 and it's kind of been downhill ever since. I, you know, I was very excited when he was coming to Notre Dame. I thought, you know, okay, 21, maybe it was a little bit of an off year, whatever. We saw what he could do in 2020. Awesome. Let's go. You know, he's going to be able to thrive at Notre Dame. Saw a lot of things in practice that I didn't see on the field. And especially towards the end of the season, it just felt like a lot of business decisions were being made. I was not impressed with his heart, to be honest with you. I I, I just wasn't. And so I think that's appropriate. I think if, if you watched Notre Dame this year and you watched him playing, he's not in your top 15. 
and I have no problem with that. That's yeah. appropriate. Well, I was shocked. Not, light years ago. I was shocked not top 15. You know, like for a guy who decided to give up a year of eligibility when his whole state admission was to be a first round draft pick when he transferred here from Northwestern, I was shocked that he wasn't at least like top 10 on Brugler's list. And like Brugler's not some hack. Like, you know, it's like sure. he's the kind of guy like you put stock into what he's saying. So I would, you know, I was I was shocked that he wasn't at least top 10 based on the fact that he decided to leave but you know that said everything you just said I completely agree with you know like I I think that he's in this situation because business decisions you know and this whole thing was a business decision and it kind of seems like he's coming out on the wrong end of it yeah absolutely because you can you can have a 2020 where you're an all-american right then you have a 2021 and you go like okay well look what he did in 2020 yeah. Then you have a 2022 the way he did. It's hard to say, hey, two years ago, he was good. Right. Like, you know, that that's too far away. Uh, that's too far back now. That's great. You got that on your on your mantle. It's too far removed from the reality that is right now. Yeah. And he did not play well. He didn't cover very well. He didn't tackle very well. He, you know, it wasn't, it has nothing to do with him being injured. It has nothing to do with the defense fitting him. He didn't play well, period. Yeah. And frankly, they were better when he was off the field, especially second half of the season. Yeah. Um, There was a follow-up that I meant to have after the, uh, the Colin Quinn question. Chi-Town wants to know, of all the Notre Dame offensive coordinator names we've heard, who would you choose? Who's your front runner? Ooh. So I think, and then you know, kind of along yeah. with that, David Jones was was asking, does Klein measure up to Ludwig Moorhead for Joe Brady? So I think for me, he is those three guys right there are my top tier. I would put sure. Klein just underneath, like just underneath. Like he he is he is now at least in consideration. He's a guy that I could get on board with, but you better be putting a full court press on those other three guys like that. That's how I would go after it. And then if you strike out on all three of those guys, okay, now we move on to the next group and he would be part of that group. So I think Brady Ludwig Moorhead are my top three. And to be honest with you, I don't necessarily have a front runner. I think all three of those guys are home run hires. Uh, And then Klein would be just underneath him or uh, underneath those two guys. And I mean, really, you know, like, Brady obviously has the NFL experience, but you know, again, like when you're talking about actual college coordinator experience, Joe Brady is not that much more experienced than Klein, <laughs> right? Fair enough. It's just that he has he a has, skyrocket of a season, you know, with sure. Joe Burrow and and that whole crew. But you know, he did he did you know work as a coordinator in the NFL, and, and that's I completely agree with that. Like right now, I think that. Moorhead would probably be at the top of my list. Okay. It's like I go back and forth between him and Brady, and I guess it's only because of the uncertainty about, you know, whether Brady even wants to come back to college and that kind of thing. Like, if I knew that that he wanted to come back, he would be number one. Yes, I I agree with that. And then, you know, I think Ludwig is really good. and And then I agree. I would probably put Klein right behind those guys. Like and I that's don't. saying a lot. I mean, that that's still putting him, you know, right up there because yeah. those other three guys, I, those are absolute home run hires. All three of those guys are home run hires. So, you know, it, it'll yeah. be, I, I'm very interested to see how this shakes out, who comes in for interviews, you know, all of that. I'm very happy that all three of those guys are still on the list right now. None of those guys have been eliminated to my knowledge at this point. Right. That makes me very happy. Like an eight rocket site and says Brady would be a splash, but it just isn't happening. And, okay. But he's know, not off the list yet. Not. Right. I mean, did did Joe Brady based tell on, you that he's not happening? Intel, based on our intel, there, there's there's not a you know negative response to this. Unlike right. the other two, <laughs> who, you know, again, it's not like they turned Notre Dame down. It's like there was a conversation, but I don't think either one of those conversations got nearly as far as a lot of people were led to believe because they have a Twitter account. And it's like, right, exactly. I finally exactly. muted the jabronis last night who are, you know, like 
spreading stuff oh. with no real sources and everything else and keep beating the drum because Hilarious. they have no real reporting of their own. And Hilarious. so they're stuck with these two names in their head. I muted them and my timeline is just so much more serene. Ever <laughs> you know, it's like, and you know, it's, it's just night and day. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No doubt. And, and look, it ain't rocket science might be a hundred percent accurate. Maybe, maybe it's a pipe dream, but until he says absolutely not, no. And he's off the list. He's still on my top three. I mean, yeah. that's that's how I operate. So you're saying there's a chance. That's right. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I like Candle too. It's just it's on that next I don't tier like him me. as much. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's he's next tier. <laughs> no, I did not mute Golic Jr. I'm talking about actual DeBronis. <laughs> you know, maybe you don't like Golic Jr. I don't. I'm I'm talking about you know guys who don't even put their name on their Twitter account. That's you know <laughs> those kind of guys who are claiming other people's information as their own basically that's, that's but but i get the joke <laughs> <laughs> uh so eagles head coach nick seriani had his young kids with him at his press conference after the nfc championship game uh last week maggie gray radio host for cbs sports says she's tired of seeing kids at post-game press conferences because reporters are trying to do their job, Vince. Do you buy or sell that? Like, man, like that. It's okay. You know, you can still ask your questions. Things are still going to be okay. Look, I get it to a degree, right? That is the place of business for these reporters. They're trying to do their job. Okay. I can see how you might be a little annoyed as the head coach comes up and he's got all of his kids with him. You're like, okay, here we go. I get it. But at the end of the day, you're trying to get sound bites. You're trying to get information. Did you receive that? Yeah? Then settle down, right? I think if anybody in that room was more annoyed by the fact that he brought his kids on stage, it's probably him because his daughter was mocking him, right? <laughs> That's right. Which I thought was hilarious. Like oh, and She well, wasn't I, even like saying anything. She I was know. like miming <laughs> him, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought that was hilarious, frankly. Right. So it didn't hurt their sound bites at all. You know, I mean. Reporters still okay. ask their questions. Yeah. It's like, I have no idea if Maggie Gray has kids or not. You and I both have kids. You've still got pretty young kids. And you know me, like when my kids were young, and I realize people get bent out of shape. It's like, oh, it's your, and I realize there are a lot of, you know, you, you know, older school, sure, you know, media type people who are going to completely fall in line with what Maggie Gray is saying. I am not one of them because <laughs> one, you know, like, look, you know, like Marcus Freeman had his kids running around at football practice. And there are times that, you know, like I'd be trans trying to transcribe some quotes and I can hear Marcus Freeman's kids, you know, running around in the background. It's like it would be easier to transcribe the quote. Yeah. But I get it. Coaching jobs consume, especially yes. big time coaching jobs, consume so much of your life. And if you're going to sit there and you're Nick Sirianni, well, I don't particularly care for, you know, but if you're Nick Sirianni, you just accomplished the biggest thing you've accomplished yeah. to that point. Obviously, if they win the Super Bowl, that's another thing. Why should I be mad if Nick Sirianni is bringing his kids with him, you know, to to help him celebrate, you know, and right. be a part of the biggest thing he's ever accomplished yeah. in his life professionally? When these coaches wall themselves up in their rooms, in the stadiums, and in the film rooms, and everything else for most of the year, and they don't get to see their kids. Bring your kids... As Paul Maneri once told me, because he would bring his kids, you know, from when they were. Yeah. Keep them around as long as you can, because yeah. it doesn't last forever. So I've got no problem with it. Suck it up, old balls media guy. You're just going to have to deal with it, you know, <laughs> or, or or Maggie Gray, you know. I, I There's other things you could say, but, but yeah. Yes. Just suck it up, man, because. People have families and people have lives. I realize that there are a lot of people who want to separate, you know, the professional from the family. But as as someone, you know, who sits on both sides of it, I've got absolutely no problem. With it. Well, I mean, it's not like he's taking them into a board meeting. You know, it, it's a press conference. You're getting your questions answered. And you're covering sports. Right. We're not covering politics. It's We're not, not covering that the serious. White House. That's right. It's not that serious. It's sports. It's okay. Take your job seriously. That's fine. But I have to say, if I was in Nick Sirianni's position, I'd have done the exact same thing. And I can guarantee you my kids probably wouldn't have acted as well, well as 
their kid, his kid. When I was kid. coaching baseball and I was the head coach, you know, one of my assistants, he was young. He was a single dad. He had a young kid and he, he didn't bring his son all the time, but he would bring him from time yeah. to time. And, you know, there was like a mom, you actually know the mom, like she got, you know, started making snide comments about it. And it's like, really, what does it bother you? You're sitting out here. He's in there. Right. I told him he could, you know, it's like, yeah. What, you know, again, he's a single dad with a, with a young son who he doesn't get to see all the right. time. You know, right. As long as he's, you know, got the helmet on and, and, you know, not running around on the field. No problem with it. Yeah. My daughter used to come to games with me last year. Cause I had a girl who played on my team and she idolized that girl. And so she wanted to come to the games. And so she would sit right on the other side of the fence from the dugout. And, you know, yeah, I want my kids there to see dad doing something that he doesn't normally, you know, people just obviously she, I'm, I would, I'm going to get, I'm going to take a guess. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. She doesn't have kids. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. Cause you don't understand. And say for certain because That's the right. time does go very fast. It does. And you want to spend as much time with them as you possibly can. Right. So that's why I love this job because my kids are literally right up there. <laughs> that's right. Sometimes for the worse, but there's no travel. I can just go right up and have dinner with my kids, and it's awesome. You know, I mean, that's it's, what it's about. Yes. Take it easy. Yeah, take it easy, Karen. <laughs> I love that. So LeBron James became the NBA's all time leading scorer last night. And I'm not going to have that, you know, who's the greatest conversation. If you look at the photo of the Hilarious. historic shot, almost everyone in the background is holding their phones up, recording the moment, whether they're taking a picture or video or whatever it happens to be, with the exception of Nike founder Phil Knight, who's just sitting there chilling on the, <laughs> you know, chilling. the floor seat, it's great. watching the whole thing. Yeah. My question to you, Vince, would you have had your phone out for that? No, I wouldn't have, uh, because I don't care. That's why I would not have had my phone out. Now, not if just I got, did that for like, no, like no, no, I know I don't a historic care. moment. Like, no, okay. I wouldn't have. No, I wouldn't have. I I might have taken some videos of some other stuff. I am such a hater, and I can I can absorb this. I am such a hater of LeBron that I don't care what he does. I would not have taken a picture. Well, again, I'll, not just LeBron, but like a similar historic moment, you know, like whether it was okay. LeBron or anyone like remove LeBron from it. Okay. Let's say that's a different say, conversation you know, like back in, you know, like when Sammy Sosa yeah. was hitting all the home runs. Yeah. In the I would have had my phone out. Yep. I okay. Would have. Because like, let's say I'm, I'm, I, you know, Sammy's going to break the home run record. Right. And I'm in the stands and I had the ability to take a video with my cell phone back in 1998. I would have 100% taken a video of him hitting that historic home run. Absolutely. Now, would I have been watching it through my phone? No. It would have been a terrible video at the end of the day because I would have been like this, watching it with my own eyes, not through my phone. But, yes, I would have had it out. I think that there's probably a time that I would have, you know, like if the technology was around back then. But what I've found, you know, going to games, and it's like, most of those pictures, it's like they're they're so crappy <laughs> that, that like that's fair. You know, maybe it'd be cool to say, well, I got the video of the video. Yes, picture you know, no, whatever. I wouldn't be but snapping pictures. The quality and you know, like the actual, you know, what it is. It's like I just don't think I would. And yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I yeah, it's like the the only good picture that you really get at a game is like, if you're taking a selfie, you know, and you get the right. game in the background or something, you sure. know, it's like, yeah. otherwise none of those pictures ever come out. No, like, they're terrible. So I don't think I would now. They're terrible pictures. I would definitely not take a picture. Right. I would have taken a video, but not a picture. So I guess I'm maybe in the middle of that. I don't know. Yeah. But the pictures, like the picture of all the people taking pictures is a thousand times better than any one of those pictures that those people got. Yeah. Like the picture, you know, it's funny because like, think about Michael Jordan and that famous shot, you know, the, the last shot that he hit against Utah. Yeah. The, you know, like, I think it was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. like, in and you look and just like, see, it's cool to see all the expressions oh, yeah. you know, on, on the people's face in the stands. Well, like, That's all those gone. people probably would have been like everybody last night and had their phones out if there were yeah. phones back then. Right. right. It's like, Absolutely. but instead... Like last, you know, so like last night, if there were no phones, you could have actually seen people you know, like living in the moment and enjoying yeah. the moment. And that's what I was again. I wasn't trying to make this a LeBron versus Jordan 
thing again <laughs> i understand it people don't you know you don't like lebron whatever that's I don't care about what kind of role model he is or, you know, any of those kind of things. It's yeah, just, that's not the, that's not the, the NBA's all-time leading scorer now, you know, whether you like him or not. And you don't have to compare him to Michael Jordan, you know. That's oh well. uh, yeah, so fill in the blank. It's blank that Tom Brady says he's going to take the next season off and begin his broadcasting career in 2024, not this year. He's going to take a full year off. And won't begin until 2024. It's a heck of a power move. If I'm being honest, like you signed a 10 year deal that said you were going to do it as soon as you retired. And you're like, yeah, you know what? Gap year. I, that's a power move. And and Fox is like, yeah, okay, no problem. I mean, that, that shows you the power that he has in an industry that he knows zero about. Uh, and he's getting paid a boatload of money for. That's a power move, man. I, I give him credit. I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Good, good job, man. Yeah, I think a whole year off is like you know, it's it's <laughs> interesting that he's going to take a whole year off, and he said, "Well, I want to you know make sure that I'm you know re, you know work at it, and you know I want to be great when I do it, and all that kind of stuff." Okay. Maybe that actually plays into it. You know, kind of going back to what we were just talking about. Tom Brady's got young kids himself, and you know, I think that part of this is probably you know like. Yeah. If you're going to be, you know, like that guy during the football season, you know, unless you're Tony Romo and you just kind of, you know, like phone in half the stuff, you know, based on what most people seem to think about him. It's like you got to put some work into that. You know, there's a lot of work, you know, with the research and putting your stuff together there and is. preparing for the game and, you know, watching game film just like when you were playing and stuff like that. So I can understand, you know, step yeah. back, spend some actual time with your kids for a little bit not really have to you know worry about doing too much and you know maybe in the meantime you're you're doing some practice games and stuff like that yeah so ready if, if that's what he's taking the time off for then i actually commend him for doing that because... and this this is something that crossed my mind not to cut you off no no you're this good is something that crossed my mind as well that john said that he thinks that brady is still coming back to the <laughs> nfl and like the Leave fact that, you know, it's like, don't commit to Fox because I'm leaving my options open, you know? <laughs> I, I, I will say, if he's actually taking the year off to actually prepare and learn how to be a broadcaster for a whole year, and still, that's not very long, but that's more than a lot of these guys are doing. And so, I actually give him a lot of credit for that, that he's taking it seriously. Yeah. I, if that's the case, then I, you know, there's not yeah. many times I'm going to tip my cat to Tom Brady, but this would be one of them. So just to clarify, Brent, when we were talking about the, you know, when I used the Sammy Sosa example, he says, in other words, Sean, you support a cheater on the sauce compared to LeBron, who's an absolute great role model. Um, the Sammy Sosa was 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 for Vince, not necessarily for me. So Vince supports the cheater on the sauce. Yes, I do. <laughs> I support the cheater on the sauce. No doubt about it. That's and right. I do not support LeBron. And Sorry. I mean, in the moment, everyone was wrapped up in in that right like yeah they were the home run chase and everything and if anybody says that. they weren't they're lying to you right they're lying revisionist history that's right going back to the uh announcer talk karen asked why isn't there more consistency in announcer quality mm. isn't there competition for those jobs there that's are supposed to be but as be. we've seen you know uh look at nbc as an example of who you know, you know, there's there's still a lot of, of that at play. Now, you know, the other side is that is there are a lot of announcers cutting their teeth, you know, in smaller jobs who are really good. And it's it's definitely a business of you know who you know goes a long way. Yeah. So absolutely. I mean, does. there's a lot of there's a lot of businesses like that, but oh yeah, in that business. Who you know does go a long way. It's that's that is the especially for those big jobs. In in every business that I've ever been a part of, whatever industry, whether it's education, broadcasting, whatever, right? It is not about what you know, man. It is right. who you know all the way. And that and it happens like that 99 out of a hundred times. Sometimes people get promoted for actually doing a good job, but I swear, man, it it feels like it's 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 who you know, not what you know, uh, yep. more often than not. Yep. 
Terry, is a game better in the box or on the field? Is the box worth a splurge? Okay. Personally, I prefer it in the box. Yeah. Himself. Like yeah. I, you, can, you can see everything. A lot of people yes. love being on the field, but I don't really care for watching a game. You know, it's like maybe, you know, like we get to go down the last few minutes at a football game or whatever. It's kind of mm-hmm. cool to be down there for the last few minutes. I wouldn't want to watch a whole football no, game from down there. Though. I wouldn't. The only reason I would want to be on the field is I'm coaching. Like, right. That is the only reason I would want to be on the field. And when I was coaching, when I was a head coach, I was on the field for obvious reasons. But when I was a coordinator, I wanted to be up because I want to be able to see the whole thing. And it's so much easier to see splits and coverages and all of those things when you're up high. And frankly, I like being up high. When Brian and I went to a couple of games during the 2020 season and we sat in the stands because of all the restrictions and everything, Mm -hmm. we sat up high. Because I like that view better and he yeah. likes that view better. You know, I don't like to have to go like this all the time. You know what I mean? I, I like to have my just, okay, I got it all right here. All my perif, I'm ready to go. Um, so I like the box view, if I'm being honest. Now, there is definitely something to be said to being on the field with 80,000 people and the crowd and the excitement and all of that. But that's not watching the game. That's enjoying the atmosphere and the, the, you know, that kind of thing. If I'm watching the game, I want to be up high. Yeah, I can agree. Okay, last question tonight. <clears throat> Super Bowl 57 is Sunday. So my question to you, what major sporting event would you most like to cover? See, this is a really, really good question. I had to sit down and think about this one. So I'm going to answer this two different ways. Okay. N- number one. If I'm covering Notre Dame, it's the college football playoff oh, sure. and the whole sure. thing. Like, that's what I would – like, going to the Final Four game, winning that, going to the national championship, like, that would be one heck of a week and a half of covering a team, right? right. Like, I think that would be awesome. That would be awesome. The, if I don't have a team in the fight, right, if I'm just covering it, Super Bowl week is pretty up there. There's a lot going on surrounding Super Bowl week. I think that would be a lot of fun. You know, I would I've always wanted to visit Press Row. See, that's not to cut you off, but I think we're going to end up agreeing on yeah. this. Like to me, like the actual covering of the game would not be as important, but I would like to be at the Super Bowl and like do radio row for a week. Yes. You know? Now, I'm the caveat to that is you have to have a good producer, you know, who can track down guests for you and all sure. that kind of stuff. Sure. But I think that that would be, that would be cool. Like, you know, they've got Radio Row. There's everybody's there. They've got all these people floating around different guests and stuff like that. You've got all these radio stations and podcasts. That's, that's what I would like to yeah. experience is like the Radio Row Super Bowl experience. For yes. Week. That would be awesome. Someday yeah. you and I need to do that. Bucket list. Yes bucket list we need to hire us a producer well jesse will be our producer love it and you will just go to the super bowl <laughs> let's go let's see if go. we can get credentialed for radio row why not i'm down uh, i am down and i will say though irish shine town has a good one the olympics i would not be upset covering the olympics yeah i would mm-hmm. agree with that as well you're in a foreign country i don't travel very much i think that that in itself would be awesome and yeah. Every time there's the Olympics or the World Cup or whatever, like I'm USA all the way. I dive in head first. I think I think the Olympics would be pretty stinking cool. So I, yeah. I will. That would be cool. That would. That would. And there's a lot going on at the Olympics. Yes, a lot going on. A lot of cultural, you know, cool cultural stuff. And then mm-hmm. obviously you get to watch sports that you don't maybe don't normally watch. I think that would be really neat. And yeah, I think the Olympics would be cool. Plus, it's two weeks. Right. Or, or even a little bit more sometimes. So right around two weeks. So if you're looking at something that you're going to get the most bang for your buck, right. The Olympics could be a really cool thing to cover. Yeah. I agree. I think we need to work on that. If Vince could get pink eye, just like Bob Costas a few years back, we need to work (laughs) on that. You remember, you know, like we, we were talking a few years back when we still thought we were going to get to go to green Bay, you know, to see Notre Dame play Wisconsin. We were talking about an RV and, and all that kind of stuff i think we need to work on the right. rv radio row wherever the super bowl you know we need to like research where the next few yeah. super bowls are find us a you know 
find us a Super Bowl and 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 hit that sometime here in the next few years. I love it. Hey, and we can still do the RV to to Lambo. That's that's gonna come up sooner than later. Doable. Yeah. So there yeah. we go. So if someone owns an RV company, if you're a PR guy for for an RV company, hit us up. You know, Let's we've go. got some we've got some good marketing ideas for you. Just saying. So I was saying. Down. That's right. Yep. That's right. And I mean, if you're selling RVs, you're not just selling to this area. You're selling all over the country, right? That's what we'll all do. these RV manufacturers here around this area. Let's go. That's right. Let's go. I told my wife actually last week, I said, we need to, like, while we're still making money before we <laughs> retire, we need to buy the RV. And, you know, so that by the time we're retired, it's paid off. And then she's yeah. like, well, then what do we do? It's like, then we go places. And then we, we hit it. The RV. You hit That's the road. Right. Let's go. <laughs> Open road, baby. Come on. Come on. <laughs> let's go. All right. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. Thanks for all the questions. We do appreciate it. Uh, don't forget, no show tomorrow because i got a basketball game. We're still trying to figure out what's going on Friday. I know Brian's going to have a show that will start a little later as possible because we've got the, the transfer guys. We're going get, to get to interview them at noon. So that's going to push kind of our schedule back and, and stuff like that. A little bit. You're welcome, K Mac. We will talk to you very soon. Hit the like button if you would. If you haven't already, we of course we appreciate it. Subscribe, rate, and review, and all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. Ivy Nation Sports Talk.